Hey artisans, it's your Sam James. I'm back with another video. This wine is very deserving of one. There is so much to say about this wine. So let's dive right into it. My approach to wine and my style to deliver information did not get into the weeds and into the technical details that can be really misconstrued or not very helpful. However, this is the exception to the rule. I've been in the industry for 13 years, and this is the first time that I've learned about Nebbiolo's lost cousin. This is a clone of Nebbiolo called Nebbiolo Rosé. This was a component in a lot of great Barolo and Barbaresco in the past. However, it suffered from tiny yields and a very light color, hence the name that was given to this clone. But those deficiencies were made up in this wine's sensual texture and haunting perfume. Sadly, the Nebbiolo Rosé clone all but died out, and it was ripped out and replaced by more productive clones that also had a deeper color. In fact, by the late 1970s, there were only two producers making it. One of them was Vietti, but sadly, we never saw a Nebbiolo Rosé clone release after 1982. Okay, so this is the part of the story where we introduce Natale Simonetta, a grower and winemaker. His great-grandfather was Angelo Gaia's grandfather. So I guess he's older. And anyway, he's related to the Gaias. But the difference is the Gaias have been growers for 150 plus years. Whereas Natale Simonetta acquired only 20 rows of this Nebbiolo Rosé clone that was planted in 1912 in 1979. So 20 rows. So this is smaller than an acre. But Natale knew just truly how special this is, despite the low yields, despite the fact that nobody wants to work with it, and it's it's considered inferior. And this is where Natale shines, though. Similar to a lot of you tech entrepreneurs out there, he saw things differently. And those 20 rows were going to deliver something special. And so single-handedly, he saved this Nebula Rosé clone from extinction and cherished it and truly nurtured it for decades to be able to produce about 600 cases, which is really nothing. Last September, Antonio Galoni himself rated this 96 points in Venice. That's a big deal because scores that high are reserved for your big name blue chip Barolos, not necessarily Barbarescos. I really can't say it any better than how he's written, which is this sweet red cherry, blood orange, chai spice cinnamon cardamom there's not even that leather that you normally smell and you know it's normally not like a brand new um i don't know louis vuitton wallet or nice briefcase leather it's this it's a 1980s mercedes that's been smoked in and everything's crackling because it's been left out in the sun um or someone told me it's kind of like an old 1980s cutlass remember that car do you remember when smoking in cars was a very regular thing? Anyway, this Barbaresco takes advantage of the 2015 vintage, which is so juicy. For how astringent and tannic Barbaresco is by nature, I'm sitting here having a ball just sipping away at this. For as delicious as this wine is, it definitely can and needs to age for however long you want it to. With every passing year, that exotic melange is just going to integrate more and become even more profound. Thank you so much. Have a good night, Arisons. Cheers.